Wow, what an amazing day. The birds are singing, Raven and Lorinda have gone off to Seat Story, and sottle has been fired for his clip last week. Nothing could possibly ruin my mood today. Unless I've forgotten something. Nah, there's no way. So then the Murloc says, Pyromancer, I hardly know her. <laughs> yeah. Okay, dude. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Oh, hey. That's my spot. Welcome to week three of the Hearthstone Global Games and a very big warm welcome to my good friend Derek. First time in the Hearthstone Global Games studio. How's it feel to be here? It is very nice indeed. I had no idea you had Ben Brode here giving personal foot massages in the cast <laughs> break room. It's lovely. Well, we have it pretty good here, I've got to admit. <laughs> Obviously, Dan Gaskin will be joining us tomorrow as well, along with Lorinda, who has been here for the last two weeks too. But let's get into it. And first things first, we're going to talk about the top five plays from last week. Then we're going to follow up with the summary of last week, right. give you the standings and the cast prediction scores so far. Then we've got an interview coming up with Toastmonster from the United Kingdom team. Then the schedule for next week and the time zones, which will be showing the show in every day. And finally, a Q&A with Twitch chat, Ooh. which has become standard every single week, and I look forward to it less and less <laughs> every time. But first, let's begin by taking a look at the top five plays from the Hearthstone Global Games last week. You were watching last, last week, right, Derek? I was indeed, and there were some very, very good ones indeed. Can't wait to take a look. All right, well, let's begin with clip number five. So first up was Greece. This is Fino on the Paladin, I believe. Or on the Rogue. On the Rogue, even. On the Rogue, yeah, against the Paladin. Uh, with a nice little cold blood into Void Ripper play here, Derek. Yeah, very, very cool. Very much cementing why Void Ripper is one of my favorite cards that we're seeing in Hearthstone at the moment. Obviously, going with the cold blood first, swapping that attack and health, and giving you what you really need against Paladin, which is the high health minions to trade against the board. A very cute little play there, which. Uh, you know, utilizing one of the coolest cards in standard at the moment. It's honestly not something I'd ever really thought of when you th when you think of Void Ripper, you think of killing Doomsayers, yeah. killing Totems, killing Spreading Plagues, etc. You don't, don't think about making little value right. trades by buffing attack and flipping it over. Um, very interesting play. I don't believe they ended up winning the game, but it was it was cute. It was it was a nice way of of maybe grabbing a little bit of percentage points there. It was indeed. And then coming in at top four on our favorite top five plays of the week, we have a pretty exciting match. I believe <laughs> moments in. This match will come up twice uh, in the top five, where Yinus from Mexico is sat there praying that this Tink Master will not be able to deliver lethal to his opponents. A straight up 50 50 chance, and then obviously it does not go the way uh, of their opponents in that one. It went about as poorly as it possibly could, actually, right. turning the 5 5 into a 1 1 and just shutting down their opponents. Mexico, very happy about that. Sotl sort of debated me at the start of that section because he was saying, yeah, Tink Master's great because it either buffs up one of your 1 1s or it deals with a taunt. I was like, well, or it just loses you the game, right. a 50 50 to uh, coin toss. So um, it was very unfortunate. But fortunate for Mexico, and as you said, we'll be seeing a little bit more of them later. Let's take a look at clip number three. Uh, now, this is a great example of really good top-level Hearthstone gameplay when both players have perfect knowledge. What, what happens here, Derek? So this is a very, very cool moment. Obviously, as you can see, Trunks for China throwing down the Azelina Soul Thief. So having an identical hand to their opponent here. And we're going to see twice in this single game, both sides in France and China are going to silence their own massive taunts just to deny the Black Knight. Because obviously, as you can see here with the Diahorn Matriarch and the silence of their own, with perfect knowledge can come perfect play. You don't have to make any kind of an estimation about what your opponent might be throwing down. So it was very cool to see there from both sides, as it was, what, the last card being Black Knight for France? Yeah. And China knew exactly what it was with some very cool play. With open deckless tournaments, we tend to have like sort of semi-perfect knowledge yep. because you know what's in the deck, but you don't necessarily know what's in the hand. But as soon as Azalina came down, you know, suddenly it's a completely even playing field. And uh, yeah, silencing your own taunt, silencing your own Lich King even, turns out to be correct sometimes in these situations. Who'd have thought? Exactly. And then we're going to move on to our second favorite moment of last week. Once again, it's going to be Mexico here with a you know a deserved victory at the end of that series after narrowly avoiding lethal in what is a very favored matchup and as we see mexico taking the victory the Inus gives it a fist pump but in the background <laughs> <Whee>! <laughs> a somewhat more <laughs> jubilant victory cry 
Yeah, uh, I have to admit, when we when we were casting at that moment, I was looking at Sotto, right. saying something very meaningful and very deep to him. Of and course. Sotto was just laughing, and I thought he was laughing at what I was saying. And it turned out I just entirely missed everything that happened, but the production team very kindly played it again, so I got to see. I mean, could he not be laughing at you and the clip? It's not mutually exclusive. That's true, that's true. He does laugh at me a lot as we take a look. Finally! at the number one clip of the week. And actually, this was an off-stream match between the right. Netherlands and Turkey. Um, Tyler actually mentioned what happened in this game to Soto, and Soto said, okay, we'll look into it and maybe include it in the highlight show. And basically, it's just a very well-played game by the Paladin here. It's exactly right. Obviously, can't include the entire thing, but basically taking a sped-up look here, the real key points here are obviously Fujitora and Turkey. Throwing away the quest, which may not have inevitably or uh, turned the game around in the end. But just look here at what's happening for Tice on the Odd Paladin. One of the worst matchups currently in Hearthstone against the Taunt Warrior, and still with the power of Sunkeeper Taran. Both level ups coming down in a timely fashion. Even against what? Two warpaths, two brawls? Yeah. It's still too much. Yeah, it was it was a little bit unfortunate for Fujitora. He he didn't get Scourge Lord's garage until far too late. Obviously, being able to just hero power down the board every turn is a big advantage. Yeah. But yeah, later on it was too little, too late, as I think Garrosh was picked up now, and it's not gonna single-handedly deal with a board full of three threes. Um, but it's also a testament to how oh no, there was another brawl first that <laughs> just kept going. But it's a testament to how well Tice and the yeah. team Netherlands played this out, because like you said, it's it's one of the worst matchups in Hearthstone at the moment, but it does go to show you can win these games. Absolutely. And it's an interesting point we brought up by having the mulligan of the quest at the start because it's a very hotly contested debate at the moment of, you know, do you ever throw it? Are you ever allowed to? Because your deck is so low value. It doesn't really do anything outside of just stalling the game until you can defeat your opponent in the late game. But I guess what they're generally thinking is in this matchup, you just win by removing all their threats and then sticking yeah. even just one Phantom Militia is usually enough. Yeah. And there you go. There's our top five clips from last week, which was week two of the Hearthstone Global Games. Special treat for you now, from now on, throughout hopefully the rest of the tournament. If you type in chat, exclamation mark, deck lists, there will be a link that magically appears in front of you, probably to the Imgur page with every single deck list from the week. Um, you've, you've been having a quick look at the deck list and archetypes, Derek. Is there anything, anything big you've noticed so far? I mean, it's interesting you say that with big because the decreasing in big spell mage is one of the most interesting yeah. things I find. I was talking to Boar Control about it after the first week, and he predicted aggro mage would start to take over, and we are starting to see that more and more, as well as some other cool decks starting to creep in. A couple of recruit warriors, a couple of Kingsbane rogues. Should be a good week coming up. So you can do that right now, anytime during the week, exclamation mark deck list. Now, next up, we're going to just wrap up week two of the Hearthstone Global Games by first showing you the standings. So let's take a look. There are 12 teams sitting with a clean 2-0 and o score. Derek, any big surprises here, or is this pretty standard? I mean, there's a couple of surprises in there that you may not expect. Some of the less well-known teams, obviously, like Singapore, Belarus, but then some very well-known teams doing well. Previous champions, Czech Republic, Romania, obviously famed for RDU, uh, and then a couple of other very strong teams as well, I would say, like Ukraine and Brazil. We've been putting up some good results recently. Yep, and there you go. The standings, including every single team in the Hearthstone Global Games. You see at the bottom there the zero and twos, including Israel with Glacier, including the United States. Um, it's, it's a tough, e even Mexico's there. Mexico right. did really well last year. Yep, exactly. Some big upsets, but it's going to happen when you have such a stacked field, so many strong countries competing here, someone has to go down 0-2. And as we enter week three, we're going to be starting to knock out some countries. So this could be, uh, you know, the world's, well, maybe not the world's favorite, but a very popular team in the USA uh, potentially being knocked out so early on. One of Sotil's picks, it's, it's t to be totally fair, it's, it's pretty rare that Sotil prediction does so poorly. It is rare, but man, does it feel good. <laughs> Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> I didn't actually know that the production team had prepared this this graphic, but there are our picks. And uh, okay, this isn't in order of how well we've done. There you go. That's that's a little bit out of date. Yes. Hopefully, we'll <laughs> we'll get the week two updates there in a second. But I believe that yourself. Dan Gaskin and me yep. are leading with three and one scores as we all have a team that haven't lost a game yet. You have Taiwan, yep. Gaskin has Ukraine, and I have Italy uh, performing really well. At the bottom is Lorinda and Sotil, <laughs> who are, I think, one and three, just like the flip score to what we are. 
which isn't so great, but there's still plenty of time. As you said before, though, if a team goes zero and three, that's it. Yeah. That that is it for them in the Hearthstone Global Games. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how USA, how um, Israel, etc., how they do. There you go. There's the updated score. Exactly. Feeling pretty good about this one. My pick in uh, Taiwan, in particular, I'm very happy with. Just love this scene over there. Obviously, you got the one and only Tom Six O Two Two Nine the team as well, putting up a very good score. But you were talking about eliminating teams. We're going to start to see some teams really showing themselves as the powerhouses as we enter week three. Like going two zero, it's impressive, but it's not that impressive. You need to be getting up those victories week after week to really show yourself as a dominant team. And I think there's a few representatives, as I mentioned, countries like uh, Ukraine, Taiwan, who are going to be in a good spot to get to that point. Yeah, I, I think that at the moment for the teams that getting four wins is sort of the big goal. Yes. That's, the, yeah. that's the position where they believe that they're, they're through to the next round. But we're going to have to wait and see who achieves that now. You may remember from this week in the Hearthstone Global Games that you, the United Kingdom faced off against the USA and won with a three and one score. We are here at the HG Studio <laughs> a little bit biased and a little bit happy about that. But someone else who was happy about that was Toast Monster, a member of Team UK. And uh, he had the chance to sit down with me and have a little chat about the Hearthstone Global Games. Let's take a look. Hey, Toast Monster. Thanks so much for coming on the show. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, just ready to have a nice chat about yourself and the UK Hearthstone Global Games team. So to start this off, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Because I'm sure there are many people watching that, that don't know who you are. Um, so I'm Toast Monster. Sometimes in Twitch chat, you know, fake toast, all that. There's a lot of toast names in Hearthstone. Um, I'm playing for the UK Hearthstone Global Games and not really too sure how that happened. I was kind of quite surprised when I saw the results. You say you're not sure how you got onto the Hearthstone Global Games team. I think you do have some idea, or you did try and twist the votes in your favour. Tell me about what you did there. <laughs> um, so for anyone who hasn't seen it, I, uh, I toasted seven loaves of bread, and then I got in a bath full of that bread, and then I took a picture, and that was my Hearthstone Global Games picture. <laughs> um, so obviously with that, yeah, you know, I was, I was trying to be, you know, get the votes there with sort of the the comedy side as it were but i mean there were some there were some great players who like i beat out in that i mean meaty was on there who you know everyone just calls meaty the ladder god so to you know beat huge big names that all the pros know like that just for something like that was quite quite a surprise to be honest uh, how did you get into competitive hearthstone in the first place sort of with all the games i've played i've always sort of tried to play quite competitively i played world of warcraft um arena which was like a pvp thing i played that at quite a high level you know getting a couple of rank one the two times and then like the high uh, achievements you can get in that sort of games have always just been about trying to compete to the best for me so hearthstone initially i started just kind of like a for fun game on the side when i wasn't playing one of the other games i was playing for the competitive nature and then as i got more and more into hearthstone i got a little bit better at it and then i qualified for the esl premiership and then i made the live finals of that and i was like oh maybe i should actually you know try and give this a go so then I prepped a bunch for that tournament and that was a lot of fun and the prep for that did work out quite well. Um, I finished second, which was like, obviously I was a bit disappointed with, I wanted first, I mean, but that's kind of how I got into it. Just, I qualified for a local tournament. I made the live finals of that local tournament and then I did well there. And I kind of thought, well, you know, if I was able to do that, maybe, maybe I'll be able to go a little bit further with it. All right, well now let's talk about what we're here for, which is of course the Hearthstone Global Games. And uh, I mean, talking about the UK Hearthstone community, are the members of that community that aren't on the team helping you guys prepare each week? Are they a big part of the Hearthstone Global Games? Not directly helping with the Global Games, but just kind of keeping my lineup knowledge like fresh and bouncing the ideas of people so I can bring that to the team and sort of suggest, oh, we can play these decks. Obviously the format for the Global Games is a little bit different, so it doesn't translate as a one-to-one, -one, but um, it's definitely useful having the people in the UK scene who I can just sort of bounce ideas off for standard best of five conquest lineups that i can then sort of try and translate myself to the best of five but with nine classes hgg format sure okay uh, and what is it you think that you as an individual bring to the uk hearthstone global games team um i think maybe my my approach to lineups is a little bit out of the box i might i might be trying to steal jackie's thunder here completely oh. but um sort of it was kind of uh, like this week, for instance, we left up Druid with the just we were so I was so certain they'd bring Mali Druid, and I kind of suggested what if we bring a lineup that's 
pretty good against Mali Dread while still being good against the field. And it means it opens up our first band for something else. And that's what we ended up going with this week. Okay. Uh, that, there were some strange parts of your lineup I remember looking at this week. Um, and they did pull in the bands, which I guess was part of the plan. But we're talking Togwaggle Druid. We're talking Combo Priest. What was up with that? Um, so when I came up with the Leave Druid open lineup, it, they kind of said, well, you know, what, what decks would we play? I was like, right, first up, Togwaggle Druid. And I was like, well, I wanted to play Combo Priest. And we kind of went through like a mock draft. And... Um, Combo Priest ended up really badly, so they wanted to switch it to Control Priest. So we then did another mock draft, and what we realized is, although Combo Priest had really polarized matchups, it ended up with like 15% win rate against some decks, but then like 70% against others. Control Priest was much more neutral across the board, but it was still pretty unfavored with how we thought the US would draft. And so it actually made more sense to bring Combo Priest, because um, if we're going to be unfavored, we'd rather it have been just really polarized unfavored with that one deck but then maybe have three matchups where it's going to work out super well for us and we're going to have you know 65 to 70 percent win rates depending on build and all that kind of thing it was a strategy that certainly worked out as you were able to beat the united states with what a three and one score in the end yeah it was three and one uh, we had a bit of an unfortunate game one with um mage versus paladin where they had the mana worm and they had, <laughs> they had the apprentice missiles and then Arcane Intellect into Cinderstorm, and ours. it was not a fun game from our, our side, that one. All right, that's great, Toast Monster. What we'll do is we'll take a, a quick break from this chat now, and we'll talk a little bit later about the rest of your Hearthstone Global Games team and the UK as a whole and, and what you think your chances are to get through to the finals. So for now, back to me at the studio. Thanks, me. It was a strategy that worked out very well for the United yeah. Kingdom, but Derek, I was wondering if you had any, any thoughts on it. I mean... The fact that they were talking about targeting Malagos Druid as their main strategy kind of made me a bit uh, cautious about what they were saying because the global games format is very different to Conquest format. You cannot hard target one deck because every deck appears, appears of one time absolute maximum right. if it's not banned. But the fact that he added on the addendum that their strategy was it's still good against everything. They just hope to dominate the Malagos Druid when they see it. But then against everything else, they've still got good decks. Like they didn't completely sabotage the rest of their decks by putting right. double ooze and Harrison in every deck or something silly like that. It was still a solid strategy. So I like having like a, a soft target on one deck, even if it is in the global games format. All right. Well, who will the United Kingdom be playing against this week? It is time to find out. As next up, we're going to talk about the entire schedule for this week. So let's begin with tomorrow's matches. It's going to be Finland versus South Korea, Sweden versus the United Kingdom, China versus Poland, Germany versus Greece, and finally Kazakhstan versus the Russian Federation. Derek, are there any big matches that jump up to you there? I mean, I think even uh, putting aside uh, my patriotism for the United Kingdom, Sweden versus the United Kingdom is such a good match to be getting on with. They're yeah. two very strong teams, real fan favorites uh, in the tournaments. So that could be very good to see who ends up going uh, two and one in the tournament, because I believe both of those teams are one and one. But there's some very strong games outside of that. Germany and Greece is yeah. the other match that we sadly don't get to cast. As I believe that will be uh, Gaskin and Lorinda on that one. Should also be a very good one, I believe, two very very strong teams. My pick in Germany, just in terms of raw firepower, and obviously with Greece's pickup of Fino this year, I think they're looking to be a really strong team. Greece have always been one of my favorite teams in Hearthstone Global Games. They're just fun to watch. Then on Wednesday, these are the matches coming up, both on stream and off stream. I'm just going to ask you now, Derek, are there any, are there any big ones there that, that you're really excited about. For, for me, Czech Republic versus Romania is yeah. looking like the highlight. That's definitely one of the biggest ones. Czech Republic obviously expected to do very well and Romania uh, with, you know, three pretty unwell known players outside of RDU was not necessarily expected to do all too well, but really showing some very strong performances, I would say so far. Uh, and then obviously I believe was it Turkey up against USA as the other one. The elimination match. Exactly, 0-2, it could be the most NA lull moment we've had here so far. <laughs> yep, as last week, um, the, the UK players were telling me they'd coined the phrase, no muzz, no win, exactly. NA lull. <laughs> uh, there you go, final day of the broadcast, Thursday night slash Friday morning, depending on where you are in the world, Argentina versus Australia, and then New Zealand versus Taiwan. Uh, two more great looking games coming up, ending with uh, your pick, Taiwan. Yep, 
absolutely. Uh, and I think that will be a very good one, New Zealand versus Taiwan. Obviously, as you said, my pick for Taiwan. But New Zealand have given us, I believe it was them against Portugal, have given us one of the most insane games of Hearthstone I've ever seen in my life with their Shudderwalk that failed like four times in a row or something with Grumble and Zola. All that nonsense. It was complete insanity. Yeah. Uh, and Portugal obviously played it very well. But I like what I'm seeing from New Zealand. It's uh, interesting plays and it's been good but not perfect, which is what I love to see because there's always room to improve. So if you would like to know when exactly we'll be showing you these games, here are the times in Central U European time. Then we've got times for you in Korean Standard Time and finally in Pacific Daylight Time. So go back, screenshot if you need to. We'll be putting them on Twitter, etc. as well. So uh, you will definitely know when to tune in this week. And now for the big question for Twitch chat. We've picked out a match for you guys to vote on. Germany or Greece? Which team is going to win this game? In order to vote, just type in exclamation mark vote and then your chosen country. Derek, who do you think is going to take this one? It's going to be a really close one. Like If you'd asked me last year, I would have said Germany pretty handily would have been in a very good spot indeed. And while Germany, they are my pick, they're a very strong team with lots of players who have been doing very well this year indeed. Uh, Greece have been putting up some good performances as well. Obviously, Fino now number two in points, I believe. And, man, just the, the Greek fans are unbelievable. Every time they're playing in the global games, Twitch chat just explodes. Like, they are so passionate about their team, which I really love to see. And uh, one of the players that we saw last week as well, Spiner, is a big streamer over there, and he right. put on quite a show for us. <laughs> Definitely looking forward to seeing what else he has got. Now, while we let you spam all you like in Twitch chat about which team is going to win that game, we will sit down and listen to the second part of Toast Monster's interview. So uh, me in the interview, back to you. All right, Toast Monster, why don't you talk me through all three of your teammates and tell me sort of how they're working together as a unit. So we'll start off with the anchor, that's ball control. And for anyone who doesn't know ball control, he's sort of, from my understanding at least, always been sort of around and doing fairly well with Hearthstone. But over the last year or so, he's sort of gone full-time Hearthstone. And now he's just killing it. He's on Fate's Karma, and they're currently ranked one in team standings. So ball control, you know, just putting up huge performances really consistently. And he's sort of, he's the captain of the team. We sort of set him for that because we figured he's probably best for the role. And then we've got Green Sheep. Green Sheep's obviously been around forever. World Championship in 2014, I believe it was. Um, and then since then, just been around, putting up tournament results here and there. Um, pretty known for his aggro decks, so pretty useful to have on the team for, you know, just the aggro decks that we bring. And he's pretty good at piloting them. He kind of knows the matchups, knows, even if they're not the same decks as they have been for years, it's kind of the style that he works with. So it's really good to have him sort of there to always, even in control matchups, to be honest, just sort of, being have the aggressive play style where it's like hold on a minute if we just push face here with all this damage we just get there over two turns and then you know off he's right and we've got jackie chan as well now wacky jackie as i think he's <laughs> often goes by um jackie I'm, I'm really surprised he's he's just been really reserved with this tournament he's not suggesting we bring all these outlandish decks and make all these outlandish plays for the most random outcome he's just really focused and really just you know, competitive for it i guess he doesn't he's not wanting to just meme around you know jackie's trying to trying his best to make the best plays or suggest the best plays as it were and you know that's just I, that's not what i was expecting from jackie at all to be honest well that's really good to hear you guys sound like a between the four of you a very solid unit we only have one more week of hearthstone global games now before the break and after the break everything is going to change how do you think an expansion launch mid-tournament is going to affect you guys as a team? Is this something that's going to allow you to sort of flourish and really show your skills? Or do you think it's going to be a struggle? Um, I think it's actually going to be quite good for us because we have got four very different players in our in our uh, team. So I think it's going to really, it's going to work well for us when we've got four different players who are going to all play different decks at the start of the expansion. They're all going to start focusing in, honing different types of decks, different archetypes. I think that's just going to work really well for us. Do you think it's going to take a lot longer to prepare for weeks of HGG once the expansion's out? Uh, yeah, definitely, I think it will. At the moment, it's kind of most of the archetypes have their core, you know, between 24 and 28 cards. So it's kind of figuring out the, the few tech cards you want for each deck for the lineups you're expecting. Whereas with Boomsday coming out, it's kind of you 
no one knows what anyone's going to bring because some people are going to think, you know, Elemental Mage is the new thing. Some people think maybe Clone Priest is going to be the deck. So I think it's going to be really hard to conclusively decide what decks we want in our decks when we do decide on the decks, the archetypes themselves. So I think that's going to be sort of maybe the biggest skill testing thing, or at least the most difficult decision making in the deck building process we've got coming up. All right, cool. Final question, Toast Monster. What's the end goal for the United Kingdom at the moment? Uh, obviously, the, obviously, the end end goal is to just win BlizzCon. But um, currently, we just want to get through the Swiss. We want to make it to the, the round of 16, and then where it splits into GSL groups, I think it is. And then we'll try and make it through those groups to get to BlizzCon. So four and two in Swiss is the score, I believe, you need. So, you know, three a month, but we're just probably going to make it four a month save ourselves the the sweat of the the lost game we'll just go three and out here on out looking forward to seeing that thank you very much for the interview toast monster we'll see you again next week thank you for having me. great interview there for mom. <laughs> thanks Derek. anyway it was a lot of fun to talk to him and i'm looking forward to seeing who we'll be having a chat to for the next week of the Austin global games i don't know yet if you if you have a strong opinion let us know who you'd like to hear from uh right now we have the results for your votes greece or Germany. I'm not too surprised by that result at all. Yeah, me neither. I think while the Greek fans are you know, very passionate, they have a lot of uh, love for their teammates. Germany, uh, it's probably just the more likely team to take the victory. They just have too many powerful players on their team, so I'd be very unsurprised to see them take the victory. It's very hard to sort of argue that Germany isn't just one of the all-around best teams yeah. in the Hearthstone Global Games. We've got four star-studded players. Yeah. Greece is good too, but it's not the four powerhouses that Germany is, sure. that France is, for example, even the Netherlands, you know. Um, but it could go either way. It's, it's, it's still Hearthstone. Anything can happen. Exactly right. All right, scary part of the day now. Let's see what Twitch chat has for us. If you haven't asked any questions yet, there's still time. Go ahead, spam them in chat. Production team, give us our first question. Uh, I'm not, you know what? I'm not at all surprised to see this. Just get used to it, guys. No games on Monday. Derek and I are playing today. We're playing the HGG Community Show Day. That sounds like a really bad game. I've got to be honest. I'd, l I'd like to present it. I don't know if I'd like to play it. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Well, no one's playing today apart from me because I played myself. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Next question. Thank you, Twitch chat. <laughs> Next question, please, production. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I had my way, then yes, but no. Yeah, it was but a joke. Sotil has not, in fact, been fired. He's, what are they going to do? Fire him? He's Sotil. He... If only. Yeah, if only. yeah. yeah. If only. <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> Which countries are playing in HCG? I don't remember. Yeah, there was definitely one. Um, I can't remember. No. Someone's going to have to help us out. Production, could you possibly give us some sort of help here? Oh. Ah, there, there we, we go. go. Perfect. I remember. Yeah, a whole bunch of teams, 48 all together, I believe. Scrolling up there real slow. Some of the best teams, uh, some of the best players uh, from all over the world competing and some of the fan favorites from last year. I guess it's a good time to just, as this is going very slowly, yep. a good time to remind everyone how the players are picked. So the top player in each country with the most Hearthstone Championship points top nine. were... But no, the top oh. one was selected as the anchor. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yep. And then the other, the next, the, the top nine, as you yep. said, were put into this voting pool and you're able to vote for people in your own country. And that's how we've ended up with our teams. It's a question that, that gets asked a lot. I guess the people that watch the show now that weren't keeping up back then. So it's, it's nice to remind everyone that's how it happens. Next question. Oh, Ooh. that's a good question. That's Dad, a very good why question. Don't you, why don't you start this one? I think my favorite expansion is Ongoro. Uh, like it just sets such a strong fra uh, framework for that year 
uh, going forward and still going forward. Like the fact that they gave such strong base tools to so many of the classes and so many fun cards thrown in there as well uh, that even now are just starting to see play. Like, I mean, Tyrantus yeah. as one of the coolest cards released, in my opinion, just finally starting to see play. I think it uh, was such a good uh, expansion to start the Year of the Mammoth, that one. I, I, do, I agree with that being one of the best expansions, actually, um, especially as it started the rotation as well or, or like continued it, yeah. you know, like it really made the game feel f even more fresh for the, for those that period. Um, thematically, I'm a big fan of Knights of the Frozen Throne. Okay. I did love like Northrend and uh, Wrath of the Lich King in World of Warcraft yeah. and having Death Knight heroes and stuff, just literally just from a lore sense, yeah. just really appealed to me. Uh, but I think the Witchwood actually, just because ever since the, the nerfs happened, yeah. this meta has been phenomenal. It's been amazing, yeah. And it's gonna be great to see sort of how future expansions build upon what, what the Witchwood has introduced. And speaking of future expansions, like already just looking at some of the Absolutely ridiculous cards that have been announced so far for the Boom Boomsday project. I cannot wait uh, to get dug into that expansion. I think there's going to be some insane possibilities there. We've just been talking about it as casters recently, arguing how do you make Mechathune work for about half an hour. We have, yeah. I think we were battling against each other on that one. It's going to be very exciting to see what the master deck builders can do. Yeah, I, I cannot wait to see that. And I just can't wait to get stuck in at the start when nobody knows what they're doing. Exactly. For me, that's one of the best parts of playing Hearthstone. Do we have any more questions, production team? We do. Underrated Italy. Okay. That, that's it. That's my hope. That's your one. Um, I think for me, it's actually my pick, Taiwan. Like, I think we they just are, both went for our own picks. We did go for our own picks, but <laughs> I think it's because, uh, you know, there are obviously teams who are, you know, very, um, you know, they're smaller compared to some of the giants. They're not particularly well known. Um, and, you know, they maybe get a good result. But I think in terms of how impressive and how good they are actually at the game, from what I've seen from the Taiwanese team, I feel like they're not being respected up there with the greats, and they actually should be. They should be uh, put in that top tier category with some of the other best teams like Germany and France. Yeah, that, that's fair enough. I mean, I, I say Italy partly as a joke because as everyone knows, I like to just go on and on about my Italian heritage, which is completely legitimate, but... <laughs> um, Turner, for example, one of the best players in Hearthstone at the moment. Paul Lay has really been making these appearances at the tour stops, etc. And as much as we like to dismiss them, Poland is also doing very well. That's, That's very they're true. 2-0, and I know that the production team are very, very happy about that. What have we got? What else have we got? <laughs> it's an interesting one. Mine would be the color of the yellow vial there. The oh, this one? one. Yep. That would be my hair color. I mean, I think you just mean what? vile. I think it would just be <laughs> vile. Why do I have to be a girl for this, though? That's my question. Well, have you dyed your hair? No. Exactly. That doesn't mean I would if I was a, a girl. Yeah. Well, I can already tell people are spamming Hot Pocket in chat. So her hair color. We'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One last question then, Twitch chat. What have you got for us? Oh. Um, that little guy up there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I d does he have uh, a name already? As far as I know, I mean, I think the production team will fill me in if he has an official name. He hasn't been christened yet. Otherwise, they're just putting us on the spot here. Let's give him a name. Oh, yeah. wow. We Confirmation that we don't have a name. Go on, what do you got? Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go with, like, something stupid, like, upside down, because he's upside down, but let's go... That with is something stupid. <laughs> I'll agree with, with you let's there. Let's go yeah. with Paul. Paul, Paul. the Murloc. Mm. As christened by Dara. Guys, we hope you have enjoyed the show today. We have three great long days of Hearthstone coming up. The last week of the Hearthstone Global Games in this current Witchwood meta. And I think that is something to look forward to, actually. It really is. Some of the best uh, teams uh, for deck building are here. Some really, really fantastic deck builders that I cannot wait to see get stuck into the new cards because that's when you get, I believe, the most dominant shows in Hearthstone. When one team just realizes that one card, one deck, one class is way more broken than all the others and put all their eggs into that basket. Card or Creeper? Anyone? That's yeah. the, that's, <laughs> that is the example I was thinking of, obviously, with Team uh, I -L -L -U -L yeah. with. Uh, their insane corridor creep. And now Jackie works for Blizzard. Funny that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching, everyone. But we will be back tomorrow, 10 a.m. CEST, along with Dan Gaskin and Lorinda for a full day of Hearthstone. We will see you then.
Thank you.